I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out Lores by Native Instruments. Lores combines rich layers of traditional and ancient instruments, creating a unique scoring tool that is perfect for adding mystery, ambience, and beauty to your tracks. The sounds of lures are unique, eclectic, and mysterious. This instrument is simply fantastic. Lures is compatible with the Free Contact Player or the full version of Contact 6.7 or higher. It includes 16 instruments with over 300 hand-played articulations across 373 presets. Lures downloads is 72.3 gigabytes and is available from Native Instruments for $199. So today we're checking out Lures by Native Instruments, which is really an eclectic kind of ancient and yet modern instrument that's used for scoring, just a truly deep and layered instrument. Um, there's a lot of traditional instruments in here like wind instruments, stringed instruments, but then there's also ancient instruments, for instance, the hurdy-gurdy is an example. So there's just a lot of really, really cool things in here. It is really perfect for underscore. Um, the real brains behind this instrument is Clinton Shorter, who's a Canadian film and TV composer. You've probably heard his music in movies like District 9, which personally is a movie that I, I love myself. But this instrument is so unique. I don't know of anything else like it out on the market today. So we're going to jump right in and we'll go through the interface. We'll go through a lot of the presets and really give you an idea of what Lures is all about. So let's go ahead and start with the first preset, which is A Gentle Soul. I mean, is that haunting or what? That is just so, so freaking cool. Um, you can really see what Lures is about here. You see three layers, but what is so super cool about this instrument is it's not really three layers, it's nine layers. Because each of these instruments, as you click through, there actually is three articulations. There's three articulations going on for each one of these, which we'll get into in a little bit. As you click this, you can see... For instance, right now on the cello, we have flatando waves and the circular bow going fast is two of the articulations. We jump over to clarinet, we've got a trill burst and trill waves. And then with the horse fiddle, we've got sustained waves and harmonic waves in addition to a finger tap burst. So there's just so many cool things going on under the hood here. We'll get a little more into it later, but let's go ahead and jump into another preset. Now we can go to the preset browser and actually look for things like classical, hybrid, air, or tails. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to put it on all, and we're going to use the dice here just to kind of go through and hear a little of everything. So the next preset we're going to get is Gigantic Ego. It looks like we've got some interesting instruments going on here. So haunting. 
Now, here's one of the cool things that you can do with this as well, is you've got these boxes here that are completely adjustable. So as I bring that down, the microphones will be closer and you'll get a closer perspective for the instrument. And as I go up, you'll get a large range of ambience, reverb, just a lot going on to really add space and depth to the sound. So let's, let's use that as an example. I'm going to go ahead and take all of these down. And we'll let you hear what a close perspective on this would be. Now let's go ahead and open them up. So, so, so cool. All right, let's go ahead and hit the dice again. A mark in the darkness. And this time it looks like we've only got two layers going on. But under the hood, we have three articulations with the cello and two articulations with the double bass. So let's see what that's all about. So haunting. Oh, it's got so much mystery. And, you know, this is just perfect for something like I I can hear this in something like a oh, I mean, this this background tells it all, but something like broad church or, you know, some kind of mysterious crime, you know, where you want to have a lot of ambience, but you also want to have minimal underscore. Really, really cool. All right, let's try golden threads. Let's do listen to me. And it looks like this is a minimal version, which tells me that there's probably. Um, oh, it's moving too fast. That's one of the things that I wish they would fix in contact is let me use the scroll wheel contact. Ah. All right, let's listen to this one. Listen to me, men and a horse fiddle. Ooh, let's let's actually let's go ahead and solo out that horse fiddle and see what that sounds like. I think that's a Mongolian instrument. That is really cool. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and try and use the mod wheel some on this one. Let's see what we get.
I mean, you've got a lot going on there. I mean, the voices, let's let's solo that out so you can hear that. It looks like we've got a EA. Let's see what that sounds like. Super, super cool. That's that's really haunting. Let's up the ambience on that. Yeah, that's insane. And you can see here with the layers, you have the con you have full control over the layers. You've got, of course, pan, pitch, volume, attack, and release. Um, with your mapping, this is really cool because you'll notice that right now I have a very limited range on the keyboard, but when I unsolo the voice, you'll see, well, I said that and then it didn't. Okay, what am I missing here? Well, anyway, you can uh, change the range of the keys as well, which I'm pretty sure I thought, you know what, let's go back and then let's go right back to it. Okay, so you can see here that there's a very wide range of keys, but when I go here, we're only limiting the range of the voice to just this couple of octaves right here in the middle. So you can see that the mapping, we're, we've got a trim range. You also can do that by um, velocity, by expression. And then if you go over here, you'll notice that the range changes yet again. This time we're going from zero to seven and we go here, zero to zero. So it looks like the whole thing. So just really, really cool. All right, let's go ahead and go to no one. Golly, you can literally do an entire underscore with just that one instrument and those two layers. I mean, that would easily create underscore for a scene. So, so cool. Okay, this one's called Healing. I mean, that is freaking awesome. Okay, that's one that we're going to have to star. I'm coming back to that. That is so, so, so cool. I love that. Just for fun, let's see if we open up. Let's see what that, I, I want to know what that one that has the pitch bend going on. So that must be the Comanche, I guess is how you say that. Let's see. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, for fun, let's go in and let's go to motion this time. And I'm going to turn on the motion. We're going to put it at full depth. Let's put that at, let's put it at a eighth note. Let's see what happens when we stutter that a little bit. Ah, having a hard time catching it. Come on, come on. Right there. Okay, and we've got can do volume, pitch, and pan. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. And now you have a totally different sound. Just so, so, so cool. 
Really, really nice. Okay, let's go to Lament. This time we have a Hurdy Gurdy and a Nickel Harpa, which I'm not familiar with. Let's check out that Hurdy Gurdy though. Let's just, let's start with that one. Okay, let's do them both. Oh, that's so cool. So, so cool. Okay, Deep Shallow. And this time we have an alto flute, a double bass. And I never can say this one. I will t- will totally murder it. Uh, no, I'm not even going to try it. You guys know it out there. We all know what the instrument is, but I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. All right, here we go. Okay, I do it for you. Catacombs. just love all the twists and turns in this one. It's got so many cool pitch bends and you can tell that those are live articulations, that those are not scripted. You know, you can just really feel the players putting the emotion into it and all the twists and turns. I love that. All right. Infinite blue.
Oh, I love that fade out. That's so cool. All right. On the surface. This is just such an inspiring instrument. I mean, you can just, you just start playing and you start experimenting and doing things you never would do with something else. Cause the sounds just take you in whole different directions. Okay. This one, we have a Comanche, a horse fiddle and a double bass rotten. Well, up M2. I'm not sure if that's a minor second. I'm not sure. It kind of looks like that. Let's see what we've got here. A new identity. One of the interesting things about this instrument is you think you know where it's going and then you start playing in another key range and a whole nother instrument kicks in, which is just so, so, so cool. Soothe me. So we have clarinet, soprano sax and baritone sax. This should be interesting. Really, really cool. All right, Noir. It's baritone sax, soprano sax, and a trumpet. The first appearance of the trumpet here. I love these little um, visuals. They really correspond. Like, that actually looks kind of like a trumpet, which is really cool.
the gathering. just love all the the movement in the instrument it's like you don't have these static notes that are playing i mean it really plays itself these live articulations just have so much movement and depth in them just so so cool i tell you what let's go ahead for fun let me see i wonder if we have an in it patch here let's see if we do i bet we do okay we've got oh i like how um yeah you can also pull them up here which is really cool I don't see an in it patch, but you know what? We can always just make our own. Let's just clear this out. I'm going to go ahead and just set something up totally random and let's see what we come up with. So I'm going to go with a medieval pipe and you can see all of the different. Oh, okay. So actually, well, that's really cool. What did I do? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, okay. So this is the, oh, so that's interesting. You have presets for each of the layers in addition to having the ability to customize each of the layers themselves. Now that's really cool. So let's actually go ahead and solo that out so you can hear some of the presets just for, for instance, the alto flute. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I guess I have to check it. No? Hmm. Let's see where the alto flute actually sits. Huh, now that's interesting. Why? Well, I am baffled. I don't know why we don't have anything there. It's not the mod wheel. Well, uh, that one's a mystery to me. I'm sure I'm overlooking something, but we'll move along. Okay, so let's go to, I don't know, maybe let's go to the cello. Oh, the cello's already up. I think you can only do one of each kind of instrument, which is interesting. Let's say if we want to go, hmm, I guess if we go to the alto flute, Okay, we'll go to the alto flute and then we'll go here and we'll try out some different presets. Let's try broken wave short and let's combine that with, hmm, maybe staccato burst. And then let's do a, more of a sustained patch. So maybe something like sustain waves. Let's try that. And let's see what we have playing that. Well, I am totally missing something. Hmm. Is it... Well, I'm not quite sure. That one's got me mystified. Let's go ahead and randomize. Okay, so here's one that's working. I don't know why, what was going on with that one. But let's go ahead and go back to, let's go to the alto flute. Let's go, um, oops, alto flute. Let's go ahead and try this. And then we will change. Okay, I like the flutter bins. That sounds fun. Let's do maybe shorts. No, let's do staccato burst. And then let's also do um, maybe broken waves subtle. And let's see what that gives us. Hmm. 
and we have full control over the volume, over the pan, over everything. So if we wanted to, we could take the flutter bins, push them kind of to the left, push the staccato burst to the right, and then have these broken waves right in the center and maybe turn them up a little bit. And let's see what we get. That's really cool. Okay, so now let's solo out this layer. There's the trumpet. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. Let's leave that. And there's the nickel harpa. Let's change that to a cello. And I'm going to go ahead and just pick out. Okay. Let's do something more. Um, let's do these instead of Latando waves. Let's maybe do some Colinio waves. Let's do that. And then for circular bow, actually, let's make that slow. I bet there's a circular bow slow. And there is. So let's do that. And then let's add a sound design layer. So the ones that are marked SD, that stands for sound design. So let's go with sustain waves. And let's see what we've got here. I'm going to turn up these circular bowings. Make sure everything's mapped good. Oh, now look at that. See there? Now that's interesting. These Colinia waves only get triggered above 70. I'm actually going to turn that down so that they trigger the entire time. Now that's interesting. Lots of movement. Okay, so now we'll unsolo and let's play the whole thing together and see what we have. Okay, let's do just a few more presets and let's go ahead and go to, I'm trying to think if we can go to the sound design layers. I think that's probably the hybrid. Oh, let's see. And that's another thing I really like about this um, engine is that you can preview these. So, you know, that's something that you can do in complete control, but even here in contact with this engine, you can just click on it and get a really nice preview. So let's go ahead and start that one. Okay, so we've got the Comanche, the violin, and the voice. I'm really curious to see where the voice comes in. So it looks like the voice, I'm still not quite familiar with this, with this trim range to know exactly where that's coming in. Don't quite understand that yet, but you can see this, for instance, is coming above a velocity level of 40 up to 127. Ah. And this one's going from 15 to 105. But I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. Here we go. Ah, oh, there's the magic. Okay. So you can trim it up, trim it down. Yeah, there we go. So this is the entire range of the instrument that we have right now. So the voice only exists in those two octaves, 
or around two octaves. Um, but then you can shrink it if you want to, which is really, really cool. And then the violin, you can see it's a larger range. You can trim that. Okay, I'm totally getting this now. That makes perfect sense. So you can trim it either by range or by velocity, which is really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we've got here. Oh, that is so cool. All of those bends. I love that. I love that. I might have to start a lot of these. Okay, let's go through a few more hybrids. Let's jump down. I saw something that looked interesting. A blow felt. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, let's give that a whirl. Let's jump down. Let's see. Ooh, interesting. I love this preview capability. That's so helpful. Let's try frozen places. I love cold weather, so why not? Frozen places. Interesting. I see the voice on here, but I'm not hearing it come in. So I'm really curious to see. That's one thing I have not figured out yet is. Oh, no, I'm pushing it with. Oh, it's the expression. It's tied to expression. Ah, oh, there it is. That's what I've been missing this entire time. So it's tied to the expression control. Let's go ahead and map that. Okay, so let me unsolo that. Really, really cool. Okay, that is so helpful. So you also up here in the right-hand corner, 
You also have some global settings, such as smart voice, which is really like a DVC feature um, that, you know, divides the cord across the keyboard, across the sounds. You can change your velocity curve, your sensitivity, and then your global settings here as well. You can actually raise the noise floor to really introduce, you know, more, uh, more life and, and, you know, really a, a background noise, a sense of background noise and movement in the back. So let's do that. And then in addition, you can boost, which is really like a, I think that's a combination of compression, uh, maybe some EQ, same thing with power. Really cool. I'm starting to learn this now. <laughs> it only took me... 40 minutes. Really, really awesome. Okay, let's do a couple more presets and then we'll call it a review. Here we go. Blackbeard. Right. And let's see. How about wooden crest? I love that horse fiddle. We've got to get that horse fiddle in here. And that, my friends, is Lores. What an incredibly cool instrument. This is unlike anything I've played with, uh, I think ever, but especially at least in a long time. I mean, you've got ancient instruments here, you've got traditional instruments here, and it's not just the fact that you have so many unique sound sources. There's 16 different instruments. I think there's like 300 articulations, 373 presets but I love the depth of control that you have. Having three articulations across each layer is really incredible. Being able to change the range, either automatically by the trim range, doing it by velocity, using the mod wheel or expression to limit it. You've got an LFO to control the motion. You've got these really cool layer controls so that you can change you know, your volume, your pan, your pitch, your attack, your release for any of the three layers independently within the single layer. So you've got three layers here within each of the other three layers. So nine layers altogether. Um, just the ambience controls for it. The background, I love the, I love the picture in the background. What a really, really cool instrument. Um, this is something I can see myself using a ton. Uh, this is something that, you know, if you do underscore work, especially for either darker films or, you know, more mysterious or kind of dark and sullen documentaries, this is perfect for that kind of thing. So hope you've enjoyed the review. Uh, this is one that I find to be a really cool and incredible instrument. Thanks for checking out Lures with me today. What do you think of this unique instrument? Do you like the ancient and eclectic feel of lures? Is this something you would use in your own production or scoring work? Comment below and let us know your thoughts. Please like the video and share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel. 
Be sure to check out samplelibraryreview.com for more news and reviews and to stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.